okay, this video is going to walk through putting in your AutoCAD file as well as the walls, windows, and doors within the dogwood house. So an important part to start off with is that we need to make sure that from Aggie Learn you have downloaded this DWG file. Now you don't need to open the DWG file, you just need to make sure that you have it downloaded and that it is sitting in your downloads folder. And then also I'm going to go ahead and download this PDF as well just because I'm going to refer to it for a couple of dimensions as we work. Now as I open it up, um, there's a few of these dimensions that we're not going to pay too much attention to. Like I'm just going to place this window where this window sits, but I wanted to pay attention to like how wide and tall this window is. Same thing like with this one, a couple of things with the doors. And then also, if we look at some of the elevations, we're just going to need to use them to sort of reference some heights. But we're just going to eyeball a lot of it based on that CAD file. So the first thing we want to do is in Revit, we want to make sure that we are starting a brand new model. We're going to create a new Revit model. And then we are going to browse our templates. This is really too cumbersome of a template for somebody who's a beginner. So I'm going to click on Browse. And then you want to use this one here that just says default. They didn't even bother to capitalize it. This is how bare bones this template is. And I'll even change these views here just so it's in a list mode so it makes it a little easier to see and find. Um, because of the fact that it's so bare bones, it's really good for beginners. So we're just going to open that one up and start a brand new project. Now, a few things I went over previously in Revit um, is that you can really kind of customize this workspace. So one thing that I like to do is take this project browser and I'm just going to click and drag it and I'm going to lock it into place. Sometimes it's a little tricky to get it to actually lock there. I had it for a second. There we go. I see it. Um, I like to kind of have my project browser large on this side and then have my properties bar larger on this side. So this way I am able to click and move a little bit more. I also really prefer dark mode when I'm working. And so that is if we click on file and then options and then colors, I like this to be in dark mode or even then I'll say use um, settings there. Now that's totally optional. You don't have to work that way. I kind of prefer this canvas area in light mode and my toolbars in dark mode. So that's keyboard trick at CA is just going to switch between light and dark for you there. Now, to make our drawing a little bit easier to work with, since we already have a CAD file, we are going to load that CAD file into Revit. And so to do that, we're going to go into the Insert tab up at the top. And you really have two options. You can import CAD, which isn't really your best bet, or you can link CAD, which is going to be a much better option. So importing CAD is essentially going to take all the megabytes of that file and put them into this one, which is going to make this Revit file larger and potentially give us issues later on down the line with things like lag and stuff like that. Linking CAD is going to be a better option because it's going to keep the two files separate. It's just going to constantly go try to find that file and reference it. So I'm going to click on link CAD for my look in. I'm going to go click on my name here, and then I'm going to go into my downloads folder, and there's the CAD file that I want to download. The one thing I also want to make sure that I change here is I'm going to change my layers from all layers to specify, and then I'm just going to click on open. So what this is going to do is it's going to allow me to choose which layers to bring in because I really don't need all of these views coming in here. I only want the views that say a plan on them. So I'm going to check none. I'm going to uncheck everything in this list and then I'm just going to go back and recheck all of these that say plan. So I want the cabinets, the doors, equipment glazing, the overhead line, even though I kind of don't need it, I'll just bring it in anyway. The prefix, the porch, the wall, the woodwork, all of these that say plan. Then I'm going to click OK and it's going to look like nothing happened. But in reality, if I just zoom out with my scroll wheel, my floor plans up here. Now we just talked about in class earlier that we want to really put our floor plan in between 
all of these um, cardinal directions here. These are our cameras for our elevations. But I currently can't move this. If I try to click and drag it, it won't move. And that's because it's currently pinned in place. So I need to click on that pin and then I can click and drag this. And I'm just gonna roughly put it towards the middle of the drawing. So the next thing then that I'm gonna do is add in all of my walls, then I'm gonna add my doors, and then I'm gonna add my windows. So to put our walls in, we have two different types of walls that are being shown, or rather we got three actually. We've got our exterior wall, which is a little bit thicker. We've got our interior walls here. And then we also have some plumbing walls, but we're just gonna frame them as interior walls for the time being. So I'm gonna go back into my architecture tab and then I can either click on the wall button here or I could type the keyboard shortcut WA to start the wall tool. For our exterior walls, which we'll do first, I'll use this generic eight inch one for the time being. And then I wanna always pay attention to my base constraint and my top constraint. So I want it to start at level one and I want it to go up to level two. So I'm going to click on the top constraint and change it to level two. I could also adjust that up here if I wanted to as well. And then I'm just gonna roughly trace around my exterior walls. Now you wanna go over where doors are and where windows are because a door and a window is a wall-based component. So therefore, you have to have a wall in order to place a door into it. And once I finish that off, I'm just gonna hit escape about 17,000 times to end the command. Now I'm gonna go back in and create all my interior walls. So I'm gonna hit WA again to get back into the tool. You'll notice that my base constraint and my top constraint are already set. It's gonna assume that that's what I wanna keep using until I change it. And I'm just gonna go into my properties for my wall scroll up a little bit, and I'm gonna use the generic five inch one for all of my interior walls. And so for these, I'm going to just roughly trace out where that coat closet is, this pantry here, this wall for the utility closet. Um, I've got this one here for the bathroom. And it doesn't have to be perfectly on there. I'll hit escape once so I don't totally leave the command. Some of these walls I've done a little uh-ohs, but I can usually fix it. I'll hit escape again to put in this closet. And so I've got two small issues that I need to fix first. And that is I need to put a wall in here. I could go and just click and click to add that wall in. Or what I could do is, if I hit escape a trillion times, I can also drag these grips out. So if walls don't like meet where you want them to meet, you can just click and drag those grips. Additionally, if I hit control Z to undo, I can use a keyboard shortcut called trim and extend, which is keyboard shortcut TR, to say I wanna bring this wall. Actually, it's not gonna work there, Never mind. Never mind because it's I just want to bring that wall to meet it. I don't want to trim them there. I just really, I guess this was the tool I wanted. Trim single element or extend single element, but it doesn't have a keyboard shortcut. So never mind. My next problem though that I have is because I was drawing to the centers of the walls, my default was set to wall center line for my location. I've got these ugly corners going on here and the same thing going on here. So to fix that, I'm gonna use the Align tool, which is keyboard shortcut AL. You'll see that little bar graph pop up next to your cursor. And then you can click on the wall you wanna keep and the wall you wanna to bring to it. And I always lock whenever I'm using an Align, especially in scenarios like this. So this way, if this wall moves, this one's gonna move with it. You can also check off up here that you wanna automatically apply the lock. So again, I'm gonna click on this one, click on this one, and see here it automatically locks the two of them together. So again, I'll hit escape 13,000 times. Align is keyboard shortcut AL, or 
you can click on anything, literally anything in your drawing, and a, the align tool, the button will pop up right up here for it. So the next thing we're going to do is add in our doors. We have a couple of different door sizes in here. So we're going to start with our interior doors because that style at least is preloaded in. So we have a two foot by eight foot or two foot, two foot eight inches by six foot eight inch door here, here, and here. Then we have a two foot by four foot, two foot, four foot, ugh, I can't talk, six foot, eight foot, six foot, eight inches. Oh my goodness. Door here, 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 and here. And then we have a couple of other doors types inside that we're not going to be able to load in by default. So like this door here for this coat closet, there are no bifold doors that we can use by default. So I'm just going to put in a regular single swing flush door. And here I'm going to load in a sliding door um, just because I can't use a bifold one using the Autodesk library. Um, and we're also going to need to load in some exterior doors. So I'm going to start with these three, these two foot eight by six foot eight doors here, here, and here. So I'm back in Revit. I'm going to start the door tool, which is keyboard shortcut DR, or this button up here. And then I want to choose my door size for my properties. Now, there is no 28 inch or I'm not doing my math right, 32 inch by 80 inch door. We have a um, 32 inch by seven foot door, and we have a bunch of doors that are six foot eight, but they're just not 32 inches wide. So what we need to do is edit and make our own custom door. So I'm gonna click on edit type, and then I'm going to ch make a duplicate of this door. Because before I make any changes to one, I always want to duplicate it. Now, the name you give it isn't really going to be that important, but I'm going to just continue with the same naming scheme that we have. So I'm going to call it 32 inch by 80 inch. And now I can adjust its height. Keep in mind with Revit, you never have to type a unit. I could just do six space eight, and it's going to assume this is six foot and this is eight inches. And then for my width, I'm just going to do two space eight. Now you absolutely could type the units in. There's nothing wrong with it. Now I'll click OK. I'm now set to that new door type. And I'm just going to put a door in here. Keep in mind when you which side you hover over is going to like determine which way the door swings, as well as then you can use the space bar to flip them around. So I'm going to put another door in here and then we've got another two foot eight door right here in this second bedroom so that's the three doors for my two foot eight i now need to make another new door so i'm going to hit escape once i'm going to go into edit type i'm going to make another duplicate and this one i want to be two foot four so that's going to be 28 inches by 80 inches. And I'm just going to change this one's width to two foot four. I'll keep the height at six foot eight. I'm going to say, okay, we've got one of those in the pantry. I'm going to put the same door for this closet, even though that's not what they originally spec. That's what I'm going to give them for that closet. We've got this bathroom door here. We also have the master bathroom door. And then we've got this walk-in closet door. Now, another thing I see a lot of students do incorrectly with doors, so I'm gonna hit escape a bunch of times, is they are gonna install the door like right here. And that's never what's gonna happen because you need that trim and everything in there. So the door is always going to have at least a little bit of like wiggle room or room outside of it here. So now we put in all of our swing, single swing interior doors, but we need to load in a custom door for the outside. There is no exterior door 
by default. You can kind of think of this as like two sheets of Luan with that just hollow in the middle. No one wants that for their exterior door. Um, so what we need to do is open up the Autodesk Family Library. Now, in class previously, I talked about assigning a keyboard shortcut for that because it's something that we often are going into that tool. But just to reiterate, to assign a keyboard shortcut, I'm going to hit Escape 13,000 times. I'm going to do KS for keyboard shortcut. The first thing you want to do for at least the keyboard shortcut that I use is I'm going to search up at the top for find. And in this find in project browser, I'm going to click on this shortcut here and I'm going to remove it because I never use this tool. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to search for load Autodesk. And I'm going to assign this a shortcut of FS and then click assign because I use this tool a lot. And then I'm going to click on OK. And now I can load Autodesk families just by hitting FS. My little menu here is going to pop up. Um, if you don't want to assign a keyboard shortcut, you can get to that tool by going to the insert tab and then the buttons right here. But oftentimes then I've got to go back and forth so many times and it just is kind of annoying. Now, if you're not signed in, I clicked on the wrong thing. Oops. Oh, abort that, please. <laughs> if you are not signed into an Autodesk student account, it's going to prompt you to sign in. If you haven't made one, it is free to make one and you're going to need it to use the software. And so then I'm going to go to the doors category. And for my exterior doors here, I'm going to load in like really one of these two is going to work pretty well for our project. I'm going to pick this one. I like that archway more. It's got a little bit of a win more of a window. So I'm going to load this in. And I want the door that's three foot wide, six foot eight inches tall, because that's what my document, my PDF describes to me. So I'll click on OK. This door is now loaded in. So now I can start the door command, which again is keyboard shortcut DR. And then I can place those doors in. And again, the space bar can flip it when you're trying to figure out which way you want it to swing. Next, we are going to load in a sliding door for this one here. So I'm going to hit escape 13,000 times. I'm going to use my new keyboard shortcut FF to load an Autodesk family. And I'm going to scroll down in this list and I'm going to use this interior double sliding door. Load it. And I'm just going to use the four foot by six foot eight one because the bifold opening was four foot wide as well. I'll click OK. And then again, I'll start the door command by either DR or the door button up here. And now I've got my four foot wide by six foot eight inch tall door here. And I kind of skewed it a little bit to one side. So I'm just going to hit escape a couple of times and click on it and like use the arrow key on my keyboard just to kind of nudge it roughly center. Later on, we'll fix it. Uh, so now we've got all of our doors placed. Um, sometimes I find it's a little easier to double check this if I change my canvas to dark mode, just to check like my walls and my doors. Um, and then I'll just use CA to change it back. Additionally, what we could do is click on the CAD drawing and then use our glasses down here just to hide the CAD drawing. It doesn't delete it, it just temporarily hides it. Because I'm also noticing now I forgot a wall right there. Oops. So let me click on those glasses again to reset. Start my wall tool so I can add that wall in real quick. Whoops. And now I'll hit escape a bunch of times. Um, a lot of times I'll find, or not a lot of times, but a fair enough amount of times, um, I find when I'm tracing over CAD, I will miss out on little bits and pieces on accident. All right. Next then is we are going to add in all of our windows. So right now I can't see my windows at all because they are behind this wall. So what I'm going to do is switch my visual style, which is down here, 
from hidden to wireframe. And what that's going to do is make these walls see through. So now I can see where my windows are placed. We have quite a few different size windows in here. So these three are all three foot wide, five foot tall, double hung windows. Um, every window here is double hung. And what we are going to do is adjust. We're going to make this one a casement because it'll be easier in the project to do that. <clears throat> um, so I'm just going to kind of tackle each window or each set of windows at a time. So in Revit, I'm going to start the window tool, which is Kubrick Perfect WN or this button here. And I'm put into a fixed window immediately. I want a double hung, but unsurprisingly, they don't have the size I want. So I just need to pick any of these four. Then I'm going to go to edit type. You guessed it. We're going to duplicate it first. So I'm going to make 36 inches by uh, 60 inches. Click OK. And then if I scroll down, I can change its width to 3, 5, and then click OK. Now when I go to place your, my window, I want that pane of glass facing towards the outside in this drawing here. And I'm just going to roughly put them where they sit in the drawing. I'll leave a little bit of a gap of space between those two. And so I've got my three foot, five foot windows here. Now we also have two windows here, one in the master bathroom and one in the kitchen that is two foot, four inches by three foot tall or three foot in height. So I'm going to go into edit type. I'm going to duplicate it and I'm going to call it 28 inches by 36 inches and scroll down and I'm going to change my width to two space four with a height of three and click OK and put my window in here. Hi, bud. <laughs> And then another one here in the kitchen. They are, aren't at the correct height at the moment, but that's okay. We can adjust them a little in a bit. And then I've got another window here in the master bedroom that's also a double hung, so, but it's three foot wide, four foot tall. I unfortunately have that memorized, but it's right there if you don't believe me. So I'm going to edit type again, duplicate it, Always want to make sure we duplicate it. It's 36 inches by 48 inches. And again, the name for the type doesn't matter too much, but it's always helpful to know yourself. And then I'm going to say OK, and I'm going to place one here. Now, for this window, we actually have like a double hung window. A picture window, this is just a fixed piece of glass, it doesn't open, and then another double hung window here. Revit doesn't have that by default, but it does have a window very similar where this is a casement, the, side, the type that's hinged on the side that opens outward, or it's hinged here and it opens this way, and then another casement on this side. So that's what I'm going to install in it because it will be a little easier that way. So I'm going to go back into Revit, hit escape 1400 times, go back into the family tool, which is keyboard shortcut FF that we've assigned now. I'm going to go back into my results, scroll all the way down to windows. And the window I'm looking for is I'm going to scroll down, 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 down down. This is the one I'm going to use. I guess I could use this one too. They're pretty much the same um, here. And you could of course also search for specific things too up there. And then I'm going to load that in. It's not going to prompt me for like what size do I want to load in. But if I start the window tool, which again is WN, it is here. Here, here it is. Now there's a couple of sizes in here by default but none of them are exactly what I want. This 80 by uh, five foot 
is the closest, but it's not exactly what I want for here. What I want is one that is two foot four plus four plus two foot four, or I want one that is eight foot eight inches um, long. Because I've drawn this building a bunch of times before, I know that when I go into edit type and I go to duplicate it, that that is 104 inches by 60 inches. I only know it's 104 because I've done it a bunch of times. Please don't hesitate to use a calculator when you need it. Um, but then I'm going to give it a width of 8 foot 8, and I'll leave that height set at 5. Or if yours isn't, please set it to 5. Then I'll click OK, and I can put that window right there in the middle. So now that I've got all my windows in, let me hit Escape about 1,700 times again and change my visual style here back to Hidden Line. That's very important that you come back to this button and switch it back to Hidden Line. You don't want to be stuck in wireframe. And let's look at it three-dimensionally for a moment. So I don't have a 3D view here. Just because in this default one, it's not going to pop up in the project browser until you come up here and hit this button. Once you hit that button, now it comes back in the project browser. I've got a 3D option to go into a 3D view. Um, so there's a few little quirks about our building that we need to adjust. One is that if your windows look like this instead of this, you currently have them inside out. So just click on those windows and hit the space bar. If you flip them, we want to see that trim part. The other is that because here we did two windows sandwiched on each other, they're kind of awkwardly sharing trim right now. So we want to join those two windows together. Join is another tool that I use so often that I created a keyboard shortcut for it. So I'm going to hit Escape 1700 times and then KS for keyboard shortcut. And you want to search up here at the top for the word join. And for join geometry, I would recommend giving it a keyboard shortcut of JJ. Um, nothing else has that keyboard shortcut already, and we just use this tool so often. Now, if you didn't want to give it a keyboard shortcut, all you have to do is click on something, literally anything, and the button pops up and it's right here. Or, we don't have to click on anything because we could just type JJ and it, the tool starts. So you'll see this little square and circle and you're just going to click on your two windows and you'll see here that it kind of cleaned up how they sat together and made it a little bit more appealing, nicer looking. Now, one thing a lot of students will say about the 3D view is they aren't a big fan of just the pure black and white. It makes it a little hard to look at sometimes, and I don't incredibly disagree. Um, one thing I wouldn't recommend doing, though, is a lot of students love to come here in their visual styles and then just turn some of these features on. Things like consistent colors isn't really the end of the world or a big deal because all it does is just apply colors to the model, and it makes it a little easier to tell or distinguish between pieces. Um, what I super don't recommend doing is putting on realistic mode and like actively working in realistic mode. Because in realistic mode, it is going to then have to essentially render your whole building. And like this really isn't all that great looking for what it's giving me. Like I don't need to see this wood grain on the door. That's a little much. Um, I personally prefer working in hidden line, just working in this black and white. But one thing I do turn on is some ambient shadows to just give me a little bit of like depth keys in there. So to turn on ambient shadows, you're going to type the command GD. Um, there we go. Must have been hitting something else by accident. And this is too where I could switch between those different styles. Um, but I'm just going to go into the shadow options and I'm going to turn ambient shadows on and you can even like do a little bit if you're in a 3D like a perspective style view we can do with our depth once I hit apply this and I can even put shadows totally on too but I usually don't work 
like this with shadows on. Um, but this kind of just gives me a little bit of more of those like visual cues of like what are different places. And I kind of like it. But you ultimately need to work with whatever makes you use the software the best. If you want to be in black and white mode or black mode, dark mode, do that. Happy with it. I personally just don't like the canvas in dark mode. I'm not sure why. All right. Our last thing then that we need to do in this particular building for today is adjust our um, header heights or our sill heights for each of our windows. So I'm going to go into my south elevation here. And if we look at our PDF file, we'll see that all of our windows, the headers, are lined up with each other. And the same thing then with like the headers for all, on every single side. All of these windows have a header height of six foot eight. Now in Revit, there is no header tool necessarily. So when I click on, which whoops, I accidentally double clicked. So if you double click on something, just click on load into project and close. If I click on this window, I can adjust its sill height, but I can't really adjust anything to do with its header. So there's two ways I can fix that. I could say, well, if I want the header to sit at six foot eight, and this window is five foot tall, what is six foot eight minus five foot? And I'll get the answer of one foot eight. And now they're sitting flush with each other. That's one way I could do it. The other is, if I know that this door is sitting at six foot eight, I could use the align tool to bring this window in line with this door. So that is keyboard shortcut AL. You always wanna keep on the thing you're referencing and wanna keep, which would be the rough height, the rough opening height, this line here of the door to the rough opening height, this line here of the window and then it's gonna bring that down. So I'll show that again. I'm gonna click on the rough opening height of the door, the rough opening height of the window. And I could even then do this window to this window. And then I'll hit escape a bunch of times. And now you can see here that all of these are set with a sill height of one foot eight. So I could do it either using a line or I could do a little bit of mathematics. Not anything too complicated, but still math. So that was my south elevation. Let's go check our west. Don't know why it zoomed me out so much. So my west one, though, I don't have a door to reference. So again, I could do it one of two ways. I could click on this window and say, OK, this window is three feet tall. Therefore, it should have a sill height of three foot eight inches to put the header at six foot eight. I could do that, or let me put it a sill height of one. I'll put it really far down in the ground. Another thing I could do is I could go put a door in because this door is six foot eight tall. I'll just slap a door in here, and then I'll go into the align tool, which again is keyword shortcut AL, and I'll say I want the rough opening of this door and the rough opening of this window aligned. Hit escape twice and then just delete that door with the delete key. So I just used it as a reference, but you'll see here my sill height is set at that exact same amount. So there's kind of two ways I could go about doing that. Um, I need to do my east one. I don't know why it keeps zooming me out that far. It's okay. This one is also three foot tall. So we know that that's gonna be a three foot eight inch sill, but I could also put that door there. And then my north wall, which this one has a door I could reference, or I could say this door or this window is four foot, so therefore this needs to be two foot eight, or I could do AL for a line, rough opening of my door, rough opening of my window, and I could align the two of them together. So that's the two ways I could go about doing that. So let's look at it again 3D. We've got quite a bit accomplished already of this building. Um, in the next video, we're gonna add floors, 
a roof, and then also parameters to the various parts of the um, walls. So like our three room shed had siding, sheathing, stud, and then interior finish. We're gonna add the same thing to these walls here. We wanna make sure we save our work because otherwise then it's gonna be really tricky to add a floor to it. So up here, you're going to click on save and then please make sure you are saving it to your flash drive. I'm going to put mine on my desktop since I'm out here on my home computer and I'm going to call it BSC1210 and then my last name, all caps, I spelt my last name wrong, my first name lowercase and then dash dogwood is what you're going to name this one. And make sure you save it.